Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 422. Each week we uh, meet here to review the uh, questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of whatsaweb.net. He's also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. And Masataki is based in London, uh, in, in um, Wimbledon in London. Tim Kappa is um, located about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim uh, is uh, um, webmaster of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's also a Google top contributor, sorry, Google product expert in the uh, Google My Business community. David Razam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in uh, West Sussex in the sunny south of uh, 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 Prince Charles. And um, <laughs> uh, you can find David at um, davidrosam.com. Yes, no? Yes, okay. Right, let's get cracking. We have 12 questions tonight. Let's um, have a look at them. First one is from Tanzila Ashraf. Um, goodness me. Uh, right, um, it, it's um, titled SEO Experts, Please Guide. Uh, the scenario is I have two domains. Uh, website old.co.uk and website new.com which I bought from uh, GoDaddy and um, yeah there we are my website website uh, old.co.uk is hosted on a host gator hosting server I've now purchased hosting from a new hosting server uh, Namecheap and I'm going to load my website website new.com on it uh, onto it um, if, if I redirect website old.co.uk to website old the, and the, the domain level I'm losing this but um, well <laughs> sorry about that um the questions are one um uh, if i if i now if i visit the old domain will website old.co.uk redirect to the website new.com yes or no uh, will the pages also redirect will website old.co.uk product one redirect to website new.com product one Yes or no? Um, this won't happen automatically. So, no and no to the, uh, the questions as, um, as posed. But I'm still struggling earlier on with the uh, directs and the cancelling the host gator. So I'm going to go back and uh, read that again and... Uh, see if there's anything else I can add. No, the hosting thing is a red herring. Um, so, you know, the problem, <laughs> I, it, I don't think it's particularly complicated. He just, you know, she, um, he or she needs to um, um, use domain forwarding, which I think GoDaddy would offer. So that would redirect from the old to new site. Thank you, Mr. Dougie. I don't think there's any need to you know, set it up yourself. I think if you, you know, if you bought a domain from GoDaddy, which is the case with the old address, right? 
Um, I think you can set up a domain forwarding. So, and choose through one or three or two. Yes, I guess it does depend on what GoDaddy um, offers, but because uh, they're both at GoDaddy. Uh, no. Um... I have two domains: website old.co.uk and oh, website yeah. new.com, which I bought from GoDaddy company. Oh, so they're both from GoDaddy. Okay, that's fine. So they're two two separate hosts and one domain registrar. So one. One place where um, the domain names were purchased, and two places where the sites are hosted, or the old ones hosted on HostGator, the new ones hosted on Namecheap. But as David said, it, it's not going to happen automatically. Um, so redirect has to be set up. I think you can do that um, um, through GoDaddy domain forwarding. And you don't have to set it up through HD Access or virtual host or whatever you may need to do. I don't think you have to do that. I think it's simply going to GoDaddy and setting up a domain forwarding. Okay, will we call this a wrap and move on to the next? I'm recording that as a yes. Um, Alison Lee asks the question, it's titled Toxic Backlinks Stemming from Images. Uh, Alison said, um, hi, can anyone offer advice on how to handle toxic backlinks uh, stemming from images that people are posting via an online app slash software. For context, I noticed that a website had thousands of toxic links. However, when I dug further, they're all image links from users who use the software to post images to their own site. I'm not sure how to interpret or handle this. So, firstly, like you, I'm guessing you're relying on a tool to tell you what's toxic or not. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at some of those sites, they're not great, but it's just the image file. Um, and Google knows how to deal with this. In fact, I've said plenty of times they treat image files as a no follow anyway. Um, uh, they pretty pretty up to speed on just dealing with these links that appear from image files um i've had well, i've got a very big image based site so i think the last time i looked um the simrush you know simrush was going mental like literally every other day going oh my god you've got toxic links deal you know <clears throat> so i've actually disabled the alerts on that um, I think there's about 300,000 to this one particular site. Um, there's no manual penalty and um, there's no perceived algorithmic penalty either in any drop over the years. So um, I wouldn't worry about it, you know. Um, they, yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's um, consider that answered and we will move on to the next. Um, question three is uh, it's titled uh, A Very Basic Question About Canonical. Um, Marina Aldade Ald Ald um, goes on to say, Hello there. Um, I'm reading a Yoast tutorials and came up with canonical links. I understand I need to add this to the head of the page. And it goes uh, HTTP, yeah, full colon, slash, slash, dub, 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 dot, dominio.com, slash, 
seo.htm. Um, let's go closing, um, um, but not, not, it doesn't open anyway. Um, should I apply it to uh, um, the page that Google should see or the ones that uh, uh, Google should dismiss uh, because they are copies? Thanks. Right. Um, I think this assumes that, that there are um, a number of identical pages um, and the one that's uh, the original um, is www.dominio.com forward slash seo dot htm. Um, the ones that look like it or are identical, identical to it should have the, uh, the tag, the canonical tag uh, added to the top of it, uh, top of them to tell Google that um, the uh, the original page, the Dominio blah blah blah, uh, SEO .htm is the uh, is the original, um, and that's the uh, that's the one that Google should be indexing and uh, tend the word about. I think that's it. Is it not? I think so, David. Thank you very much. Right, it's. Um... Roll on to number three. It's four, I should say. It's uh, Tanzila Ashraf asking when we don't use the exact keyword that has traffic. Um, Tanzila said, uh, according to S search engine optimization, it doesn't matter if we don't use the exact keyword um, that has traffic. Um, and we have an example here, keyword for con, uh, skin tightening serum for face. In Google Search Console, this keyword's monthly searches are 10 to 100 and, and the competition is high. Well, so you also need to understand um, um, sort of the context and, and Google's going to kind of understand this thing. So in your site, you're not going to have skin tightening serum just randomly lying around on the site. It would be you're going to separate it by face, body, legs, mm, whatever else. You, you know, also if it's in the face or facial facial care section, you don't need to then say skin tightening serum for face. Um, um it would be in the context and it would also be in it would be included in the description where you would probably say something like um <clears throat> the skin tightening serum has been developed by swiss dermatologists to tighten the skin around the eyes and whatever um you know use regularly once a day as a part of a whatever routine um massage into the pores around concentrating on the eyes nose uh the, the cheek or whatever so by including face in it you've got all these signals telling a search engine where this product is being used you don't specifically need to have it in the title of the product as skin tightening serum for the face <laughs> Did you notice Mr. Taki's note there, Tim? <laughs> okay. Right, let's um, now have a look at uh, number five on our run list. Uh, he said, I, I want to know what people search for to find me. Christopher Fern goes on to ask, uh, um, do you have any tips on, on finding associated searches across all search platforms? Uh, for example, I, I have a client, Dr. Michael Lennox. I want to know what people search for um, to find him. 
um, the Google Search Console can only give uh, so much. I'm either looking to pay someone a small fee or be pointed uh, uh, to an answer or, or to a few tools. Um, So the thing is, you're searching for for an actual person. Um, there may actually not be a lot out there, uh, even even if you do use tools. Um, it it depends on uh, who this is, how highly regarded it is. You may want to change up some of your queries. If he's a surgeon, for example, put plus surgeon. See what other queries there are. Things like this, um, yeah. I mean, that could be like putting in your own name. Like, how do you think people would be finding you? Um, I would look at combinations of more popular people, uh, and then, and then, uh, put down what their specialities are. And then you could kind of guess what people would be searching for it um, to be finding him. But to be fair, unless this dude is some kind of like, you know, <laughs> top tier, you know, everybody wants to find him, surely people are just going to use his name. I doubt they'd be saying, what did Dr. XYZ have for breakfast? like you would have with other people and queries. Uh, how much did he earn? I really doubt people are going to be searching that. Um, so maybe search for someone who's very well known in that kind of field, who is like almost, let's say, a household name. Check out what their kind of search queries are. Use, you know, you can use um, some tools to, to check out them and see what kind of queries are around that. Um, you could even maybe chuck it into, uh, like depending on how popular that, that name would be, you know, answer the public and then change it around and change the queries around to what that person does, which would probably give you uh, a whole set of variable kind of, uh, potential search queries that you, if you are, I don't know why you want to optimize it for, but you know, around that. Thank you, Tim. All right, just... Slightly, uh, yeah, sorry, David. Slightly yeah, silly yeah. view on this, um, um, but you know there are the um, there are the Doctor uh, Doctor Mike Lennox, Doctor Mickey Lennox, Doctor, you know, so on and so forth. Um, the um, more friendly and slangy versions of Michael. Um, but I doubt, I doubt it as he's a, um, as he is a, uh, uh, a doctor, shall we say a medical doctor, let's presume it's a medical doctor. I can't see him calling himself Dr. Mickey Lennox, but um, you never know if, if that's what he actually calls himself. Maybe that's what people are searching on. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, um, there we go. Okay. All right, let's go. If there are no objections, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the next. This one is um, number six on our run list. Uh, he's... Wesley Pestana said, I have three dumb questions for you uh, today. Wesley said, um, hi all, I have three dumb questions for you today. I have just received my Google My Business verified um, and will start creating citations next. I have my businesses um, listed in the capital city of Johannesburg, um, South Africa. 
I rank organically across all major cities and provinces uh, in South Africa. So uh, my goal is to ultimately have a, uh, a, a Google My Business listing uh, in three of our major pro provinces. Although the one that we'll do for now, so my questions are, um, when creating uh, um, the initial citation, should I enter the address as only the address corresponding to the existing Google My Business? Two, if when I get the, um, oh, damn, I'm losing this again. Um, when I get the Google My Business um, listing for other cities, do I simply duplicate all existing citations? Um, with a new address, or do I need to update all existing citations to include the new city? And three, um, should I go with a bright local slash citation builder, pro slash white spark slash, oh, I'm not even going to say that word. Um, yeah, so look. Time. So you already say you're making organic. I'm, I'm guessing you mean that these are location pages that you have for these particular cities. Okay. Now, so that, 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 that that's different. So GMB, you need to understand, is based upon an actual business location, okay, um, where you operate from. Um, so first off, you need to have an office, right, if you're, if, if you're there, or you could be a service area business but you still need to have somewhere where you're operating out of in that particular city, okay? So you're already in Joburg, you're in um, Four Ways or whatever the case may be, and that is where your first GMB listing is gonna be, and that is the uh, address you use for your citations. So the name of the business, the address, and the telephone number for that location, right? Your citations, uh, you mentioned those citations. I don't think they do any S South African, um, South African um, uh, aggregators. So yeah, you probably need to just find a list of some South African aggregators. I think there's only about three or four and just whack them in there manually. Don't, need, don't, don't even bother, you know, do them properly. You're in control, end of story. Right, so you want to open up another one. So then you want to open up another business in um, East London. So you are going to obviously find premises if you are actually people come to you. Or, I mean, you say you rank organically for all major cities. So I'm guessing you provide some kind of service that you don't actually need to be in that location. However, even if you've got a service area business, you still technically need to have an address in that area. So, um, you need to have an address. You need to, obviously, the name. It's going to be a different telephone number because you're operating in a different city. You can't use a Joburg telephone number to operate in, in East London. You provide an East London telephone number, okay? Now, that is your next GMB. You get that verified, and those are what your citations are going to follow. The name, the East London address, the East London phone number, and the link to the East London landing page right um because that makes sense you can also then use the same out you can use different hours or whatever the case may be then when you go to cape town right so you find yourself a premises the name of the business the cape town address the cape town phone number right probably using the link to your cape town location page when you build citations it's the name of the business the cape town address the cape town telephone number right so each and every one is a separate individual entity, and each and every one needs its own citations built for it. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's move on to number seven. Okay. Miranda Young asks the question titled, what's more valuable? Um, what's that more valuable? External backlinks or internal links? 
It depends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like Michael's. Michael said neither. Neither or neither can sort of neither. In, in, in they're, they're both valuable in, in, in different senses. But um if I was taking on a site, um, you know, already a site that's up and running, that's, you know, doing okay, but they want work on it. Um, I would be looking at internal links as a priority rather than external links. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? I, I, th I think uh, I think Tim's right. I, I think the internal links, if if they haven't been done to death, um, are easily done or easily done to a good qual quality. Whereas external links, good quality external links, are difficult to do. So um, that's not answering the question. What's more valuable? But uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a very good point. Yeah. yeah so yeah yeah like like i said um you know i would concentrate on internal firstly and then external is kind of later on in a project uh the other thing i'll say to you is if you had a new client come to you and it was a decent sized site i'm not just talking like a 30 page site but it was a decent sized site and it was doing all right and you um sort it out your internal links you could bump it from like page two to one just by sorting out all your internal links whereas one external link would do jack shit for you okay let's go to number eight on our run list Nicholas Johnson uh, asks a question. It's titled, how many words should we have on our product page? <laughs> and he goes on to say, uh, how many brackets well-written words should we have on our <coughs> product pages and in, in product pages in pages? We have uh, an e-commerce site. I don't know that was the word we were missing. Um, and Zemadiah Ranger has said 300. I would <laughs> say you can never have enough. Mm. Uh, I think it's, it depends. <laughs> to quote the most favorite answer uh, to those questions. Because it depends on the product itself. You know, some products may not need so many words whereas others probably do. I mean, that's what Amon Johns pointed out, if you scroll down a bit. So I, I, I would put it to this, and this is what I put to my clients, right? Um, when, when, when we're looking at, you know, when it's an e-commerce site. If that customer walked into your store and you could not say anything else, to them when they poke when they're pointed at the watch or the car or the necklace or the hat or whatever and you could only say to that customer what was on your product page would you make that sale and that's how you need to think about it stop thinking about the words how many words blah 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 you know what you tell people on the phone or when they come into the store about this product the watch how it was made, where it was made, it looks good on this, looks great in this, check out this in the sunlight, whatever the case may be, right? Um, it took, you know, uh, 15 child slave laborers to get the hands right and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera, and, you know, uh, and, and all of this, you know, whatever the case may be. What I'm saying to you is that you know what you do to make a sale in store, right? If you could only say what you say on that product page, would you make the sale? And then you need to bring the two together. Thank you, Tim. That's valuable. Okay, number nine on our run list. 
um, it's uh, titled, um, Should You Implement a Video Object Schema? It's from Kunjal Chohan. Um, he also said that if there are three to four videos on a landing page, all relevant. Uh, um, so should you implement a video object schema for all of those videos or only one? Richard Hearn said, uh, yes, you can. He said, you might get more value having them on different pages, but what you've described certainly won't uh, hurt you. Anybody else? Yeah, I think because you know, it's like image object, you can have many of those on a page. Um, so I... Hmm. So, you know, having multiple or single, that really doesn't, I think, come into um, conflict. Um, the question is whether those videos are on the landing page and on their own pages or not. So then I think it becomes a bit interesting, but then I think schema might help in that instance, because then you can um, point to the individual page um, as the URL for the video um, object, even if you have it on your landing page. Thank you, Meta. All right, let's go to the next uh, unless there are objections okay sakib shedman asked a question it's titled on page uh, search engine optimization for non-blog contents um <laughs> And Sarkib goes on to say, greetings, SEO masters. How do I go about doing on page for uh, non-blog contents like the shop and the uh, homepage? Also, what kind of keywords should I target for these critical pages? Well, so surely, like your homepage, you would know what it is. Um, so let's you, uh, you said shop content. So I'm going to say, let's just say this is a um, pink fluffy elephant emporium. <laughs> okay. So your 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 title would be the, the, the name of the store or the e-commerce store, Pink Fluffy Emporium. Um, are you nationwide? Like, you know, are you specifically, you know, in a country or global? Maybe that specific page is just for one site. You could then go Pink Fluffy Emporium hyphen UK nationwide delivery, for example. Okay. For your homepage. Your homepage would be the Pink Fluffy Emporium um shop the greatest uh pink fluffy elephants available you know in the uk 24 hour uh, you know 24 hour ordering nationwide delivery blah 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 blah, blah. um you know we have supplied this toy shop that toy shop this toy shop that toy shop um that elephant sanctuary that elephant sanctuary you know what i mean so your home page is about you and the business, a little bit about you, what you do, your ethos, your value, you know, and welcome, welcome to our site. Um, so your shop now, right? Yeah, which is your your shop page. Um, generally, will there'll be a drop down, <clears throat> and let's just say um, you've got pink fluffy elephants as 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 a as a product category page 
then you've got pink fluffy giraffes you've got pink fluffy zebras and you've got pink fluffy um buffaloes right so when you click onto that one it'll be pink fluffy elephants um and then on that pink fluffy elephant it would be you could have different variations you could have check out the 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 extra fat pink fluffy elephant product then there's the next one um check out the happy pink fluffy elephant check out the grumpy pink fluffy elephant look at the disabled pink fluffy elephant and it goes on so then you're segmenting out so um you know each one is kind of optimized based upon what is on that actual page and the landing page for a product would be just an introduction to it um and then of course the products then they land on the product that product is optimized for its specific name this is the um uh, mr grumpy pink fluffy elephant um a little bit about him you know obviously you're going to have slight duplications in that because the same product is the same but you know why did you make mr grumpy because mr grumpy um he doesn't like following the herd uh etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so just slightly a little bit different etc and, and and that's generally how you would do it if you're going to look you know if you want to look at something just just query search anything particular in terms of what your shop is and you you know check out position one to five uh or, you know on on google and and just have a look on how those you know how your competition is doing and 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 how they've optimized um their particular things thank you tim okay yeah we're looking at number 11 on our run list it's titled the site uh, isn't indexed but the uh, post is and sakim shadman said uh, uh, a, a site link back to me. I noticed that my featured post was indexed on that site. Is that bad? The site isn't indexed, but the post is. I said uh, it is not bad, Sarkib. Googlebot does not rank sites. Googlebot ranks pages. Sarkib seemed to, to feel that, that this was um, useful. Okay. All right, let's now go to number 12 on our run list. It'll be our last question for the night. Christian Eve, 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 um, it's titled The Best and Easiest Way to Get Quality Backlinks. Um, and Christian said, in your own experience, what are the best and easiest ways to get quality backlinks? And Tanzila uh, Ashraf said, nothing comes easy if we go for the uh, quality. Oh, the easiest way to get quality. You know, this kind of stuff just does my head in. Um, so the easiest way to get quality backlinks, here you go. Um, is to provide content on your site that users will search for, that users will find useful, and users will share. And that way you're concentrating on your site, you're concentrating on building your site, you're concentrating on providing uh, information to, to the site's users um, <clears throat> that's going to make it uh, informational, it's going to make it um uh you know useful to people you're going to either answer questions provide video content either you know whatever the case may be there's a whole lot of ways of 
providing content and instructional stuff for users of a product to site to service or whatever the case may be. And um, if you, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's good, people will link to it, whether that be a social link, whether that be just mentioned here, whether that be, um, it, 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 do, do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah. Excellent. Uh, yes, just one moment. Um, okay. All right, let's um, click this link and I think we'll get, yes, we will. Uh, it is, uh, thank you for watching time. Thank you, um, but, but before we go, I must uh, point out a few things. Uh, one is, thank you guys for turning up um, week after week. We're, we're up on to 422 episodes. Um, and, you know, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa, David Rosem, um, without uh, your uh, uh, input, um, dumb SEO questions wouldn't be uh, um, as valuable as I think it is. Um, and I also should thank, um, I can't think, think of all of them, I'm not on my game tonight, um, but Brandon Malone, Michael Martinez, uh, Michael Stricker, um, Oh, I just can't think of them all. Anyway, um, we're back at the same time next week to do this all again. But for now, it's um, good night.